Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are super well. So, I thought this was probably the right time to do this video, seeing as my sister's hen party was just a few days ago. So many DMs from you guys about the decor, the companies I used, how I made things and so I thought I would do a bit of a informative chatty video on how to organise a hen party in the UK. So I really hope you guys find this video useful. Let's get going. So you've got a hen party to organise. It is a stressful task, I am not going to lie. It, it, it's a tough one, but I think with lots of planning, ask for help from the other hens, from the bride tribe, from the other bridesmaids, and you will be good. So, it's all about teamwork, guys. So, first off, the best way to start planning a hen party is the number of guests. You want to know who is coming, how many of you there are, and is it just family, is it friends? Yeah, you just want to get the number of everyone coming. Then you want to work out a budget that everybody feels comfortable paying. So whatever that may be, I tend to think, I've been to a few hen parties, the average cost of a hen party is around £250 if you're doing like a Friday night to a Sunday morning hen party, weekend hen party tends to be around that 250 ball mark. I have been to ones that are more expensive. I have, have I done ones cheaper? No, it tends to all be kind of on average around, you know, like 200 to 250. So for my sisters, I set a budget of 250 as I felt like that was quite affordable for everybody considering the amount that we were gonna be doing and the fact that it was over a weekend. Originally, her hen party was meant to be in Ibiza last summer, but obviously because of coronavirus, it didn't happen. Um, so I had to rebook, change plans, and then I had booked a hen house for 15 of us, but again, that couldn't happen because of COVID. So I ended up hosting it in my garden, but actually, my sister said it was the best kind of, it was better than what she thought Ibiza would have been. She said she had the most amazing time. So honestly, you don't have to have the best location. You can do it in a really simple, easy location that's free or affordable, and you're still gonna throw the best hen party. So once you've worked out the budget, you'll then wanna figure out a date. So honestly, I would give yourself, if you can, at least eight months to a year of planning. Things get booked in advance. You wanna give everybody in the bride tribe time to save. So definitely eight months to a year planning would be great. It's just everything with weddings just gets booked up so far in advance. So you've got your guests sorted, you've got your budget sorted and you've got your date. Now it's time to plan a theme. I feel like everyone loves a theme and I know the theme is a hen party, but maybe get together with the bride tribe and write down lots of different things that the bride-to-be loves. What are her, are her favorite foods? What are her favorite drink? What's her favorite passion or hobby? What's her favorite film? What's her favorite music? Write down everything the bride-to-be loves and you'll be able to work out a theme. Obviously with my sister, she loves Ibiza. She wanted her hen party to be in Ibiza. She's meant to hopefully be getting married in Ibiza this summer. So I knew for her, Ibiza, house music, frozen strawberry daiquiris, which you guys messaged me a lot about. I will tell you how I made those soon. Um, yeah, so 
write a list of all their favourite things. And then you can kind of figure out a bit of a theme. And once you've got your theme, you'll then be able to work out kind of where you want the location to be, what you want the itinerary to be like, and it will just help you get all of your ideas together. A great thing to do is go on Pinterest and start pinning things around the themes of your brighter be. So whether that is Ibiza, type in Ibiza hen party, type in boho hen party, festival hen party, whatever you can think of, type it in like Beyonce brunch hen party. Any ideas that you've got, start pinning lots of ideas just to help you guys kind of really like condense the idea down and so you can really start planning it. So that's all sorted. Location. Are you going to be going abroad? Are you going to be doing it in a garden? Are you going to be doing it at someone's house? Are you going to hire a house? Are you going to look on Airbnb? I'll pop a few really great websites below of places where you can look for hen accommodation, whether that is an Airbnb in the UK or a hen house or whether you want to go abroad. I'll pop a few really good links below um, for you guys if you are planning a hen party right now. And once you've got the location sorted, you can then start on the itinerary. So I love an itinerary, it's one of my favorite things. I go to a lot of blogger events, so I'm honestly so down with doing like arrival, welcome drinks, then we'll do a game and then we'll do this. So really plan a rough itinerary. It doesn't need to be perfect, just a rough itinerary of how you think the weekend will pan out. So if you're doing, you know, a Friday to a Sunday, you're gonna want, obviously guests are gonna arrive on Friday. So you're probably not gonna want it to be too heavy on the Friday night. The Saturday will be your main hen party day. So the Friday, obviously you might get guests coming in at different times, so you might not be able to do something, you know, all together till quite late. So I think the Friday, for me, I always like it to be quite chilled in a hen party. You know, play some games, get everyone mingling. On a hen party, a lot of people don't know each other. The bride-to-be knows everybody, but all the little groups tend to not know each other. So I find doing team games, mixing up the teams, something like that will just really get everybody together. Beer pong. Great game to play. And I actually bought and personalised a beer pong table. I got one for my wedding and I thought my sister would love it. So I did one with photos of her and her fiance. And I got it from Zazzle. I think it was £120. I'll put a link below. But that's just like a great personalised thing that the bride to be can keep. And beer pong is a great game to play. Or Prosecco pong, gin pong, whatever drink the bride to be loves, whatever drink the bride tribe love, put it in the cup so it doesn't have to be beer. So, okay, so yeah, so basically the Friday night for my sisters, we did an outdoor cinema night. We had a projector um, and we watched Bridesmaids. Such a good film. Everyone loved it. And it was just a comedy. So we were all just like laughing. We're like, oh my God, this bit. We were like reenacting it. We were saying the lines. Like a movie night is a great way to start a hen party because it gets everybody together and it gets everyone laughing. You can do popcorn. You can do pick a mix. I made pizzas for everyone using my pizza oven. Actually, well actually I'll show you later with the decor and everything. But yeah, we did pizzas. So like, think of a rough itinerary. Saturday is your main day. A lot of different activities that hen parties tend to do is a dance class, karaoke, a night out, flower crown making if you're doing a festival themed one. It might be cocktail making. So many different activities. I'm going to pop some great blog posts below of activities that are great ideas. You could do pizza making, pasta making. There's so many different ideas out there. An escape room. Just obviously with coronavirus at the moment, it's a little bit difficult. But one activity that I kind of came up with myself and that I haven't really seen before was pampas grass making. I contacted Pampas and Bloom. I actually did a blogger event with them a few months ago. And I just, I mean, I love the idea. And my sister loves pampas grass and dried flowers. She's having it all, all at her wedding. So I thought this is such a good thing. And so we did it on Zoom. So yeah, highly recommend it. I think I paid 30 pounds per person, but you get to keep the vase, you get to keep the pampas grass bouquet. And it's an amazing thing. We all sat there in the sunshine and it was so fun. We were chatting away. And I love the fact that everyone made their bouquets look different. And it was just such a nice little like therapeutic activity that's kind of like flower crown making, but something a bit more kind of up to date and modern. And just, yeah, I just loved it. And everyone loves pampas grass at the moment. So it's just nice that you can then keep that as a keepsake at home 
forever because literally pampas grass is like last forever um and then what else did we do we did like an ibiza themed dancey kind of night i had a saxophone player which i'll talk about in a minute um just yeah figure out an itinerary that works for you works for the location and works for all the bride tribe gang and the bride to be obviously you might have activities there that might not be suitable for the adults so you can kind of just work it out with your group basically but yeah then figure out the itinerary once you've got the itinerary then you're going to want to start researching to book things so you've got your itinerary you've put, you've listed all the activities that you want to do now it's time to research who's in the area for to do those activities or the decor or anything like that so i went on a couple of amazing websites which i will again link below that's how i found the saxophone player within my area you can basically hire so many different things but you filter with your postcode and the activity or what you want the, it what you what you're trying to find basically and also the occasion so it was great and um, so once i found the sax player that was all sorted i then wanted to kind of set up the garden in like a really really cool way and i thought about doing like that kind of grazing table boho picnic i'd seen a lot of um companies on instagram that did that sort of thing and i knew my sister would love it and it was just perfect because it meant that the food was all included in the day and i wouldn't need to worry about the food in the day so yeah i kind of scoured the web and i came across pitch boutique the the girl katie that runs it does the most amazing setups there's so many different things that she can include in the package that you get she does bell tents if you want to do like a camping party like and everyone camps in the garden um she does balloon arches flower crown making like what you name it whatever you want to do she will sort it for you and she'll work with you to create your vision and it was amazing so that was really really good so i booked her in and again that was actually quite affordable she did like packages per person for like the grazing table i think i paid 12 pound per person for the grazing table which i thought was really great and then obviously with the boho setup and everything i think I'm trying to think what the total was so i had the grazing table the boho setup and a balloon arch the peacock chair which i hired for my sister i had overnight hire as well you can pay extra i kept the setup for the next day because i did like a little brunch in the morning on the sunday which is quite nice get everyone together chat about how the weekend went played a few more little games and um yeah which is really really nice so um so i think it was, i think it was about 680 but she did kindly give me a 30 percent discount so i'm gonna put that out there she gave me a 30 percent discount just to share about her company on my social media channels she asked me if i wanted to do that and i thought actually i want to share share the company with you guys because she is so amazing at what she does and she's so sweet and i just think i want to shout about her company because the food was amazing and i actually had pitch boutique at my friend alice's hen party the week before and bless her i said to her look can you make can you make the setup different because obviously my sister was at my friend alice's hen party as well and i didn't want them both to feel like they had the same thing because obviously a hen party is personal and special to the bride-to-be and bless her katie honestly made the setup so different it was amazing and we had the same food again but the food is unreal guys so yep yeah, highly recommend pitch boutique um, I think she's based in the Essex area, but I don't know how far she would travel, but definitely reach out if you're looking for that sort of thing. She doesn't just do hen parties, she does occasions, like whatever you want, she'll do it. Then, um, actually had a company last year message me, annoyingly after Stamfest, our 30th birthday party. Um, she's from Letters of Glow. And she basically just reached out and said, if you've got any parties coming up, then I'd love to help you with like a backdrop, any props or decor bits that you want. And so I remembered her when I was organising my sister's hen party and I thought, I would love a photo backdrop for my sister and I know she'd love that. And I reached out to Letters of Glow and I just said, look, it's not for me, so I'm totally happy to, for you to quote me and for, for me to pay for it because it's not my party. Uh, but she was like, no, 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 like, bless her, so sweet. Please, like, I want to do this amazing setup for you. So, bless, Hayley really went to town. She put up the most amazing backdrop. Oh, like, sequin-like wall with all these, like, balloons around it. It's on, like, one of those, like, balloon hoops. 
like a giant hoop with pampas grass and dried palm leaves all poked in between all the balloons like it was amazing and then she also has these light up letters um that are battery powered so you don't need to plug them in which is really good and it we just went for hen she did um she's got quite a few she's got one that says like love and it's like pink glitter letters but we went for hen and then she did like a balloon a trail of balloons like running over the top of the let like it was so good and bless her she gave it to me for free so so sweet so again i want to shout about her because it was amazing what she did so they're based um in like the cambridge area so i mean she drove to essex i think it took them about an hour and a half or two hours but she's definitely you know willing to drive so if you do live outside the essex area definitely reach out to her she's got some amazing amazing setups i'll pop links below to all of their instagrams um okay cool so once you've booked all of your decor your activities whatever's on your itinerary that you need to book once you've booked it all you tend to pay deposits and then you pay the rest of the amount either on the day or a week later or a week before so you can kind of you need to kind of get a bit of a deposit from everybody um, and it tends to be something very small like i took a 50 pound deposit from all of my um, hens in the group and then yeah we paid the final amount a couple of weeks before the hen party so once you've done all that you're then onto the fun bit of like the decor personalizing bits and bobs games and just like planning kind of how everything is going to run and how you're going to fill the day how you're going to decorate and stuff so yeah this is where i got a lot of questions because i did a lot of diys in my cricket maker so obviously if you don't have a cricket maker it might be a bit difficult to do these um, DIYs, but I know that there's a lot of people that sell Cricut bits and bobs, like stickers and labels on Etsy, so you could have a look. Um, or invest in a Cricut, because trust me, I use my Cricut for so many things and it's such a good investment. So I'm gonna show you a couple of things that I made. So first off, obviously for the outdoor cinema night, I knew it's gonna be quite chilly. I mean, it rained, but it was gonna be quite chilly. So I thought it was a cool idea to make everybody hen jumpers like this so pleased with how it turned out so i went on boohoo i mean i know boohoo is bad to shop at but it's quite difficult in terms of trying to get something affordable for that many people you want to do you know you want to go on primark boohoo Shein, misguided any of those places to get these jumpers i mean you can't be going sustainable when you're doing a hen party annoyingly but so I bought this jumper in nude. I know my sister loves like nudes and blacks. So I kind of kept it quite simple. Then I went on Pinterest and I had a look at um, kind of IB3 illustrations. So like palm leaves and stuff like that. And I found a couple of different illustrations. And then I took those into Procreate on my iPad and I basically deleted some parts of the illustrations and it's quite bad to do. I don't know who designed these illustrations, but obviously I'm not doing it on like a large scale it's literally just kept for me and my hens so yeah or you could i think they're just generic like um illustrations that you just find like stock illustrations like you can go on google and get stock illustration and tweak it so that's kind of what i did and then i tweaked it and merged it together i added my own illustrations within the illustration so i added in these little leaves added in some more little dots and lines and then i went on to font and i got the font up for katie's hen party and I basically kind of copy, I, I took a screenshot of the font on defont.com. I imported it into Procreate as a layer and then I traced the text so I could get like really good font basically. I don't know if there's an easier way of doing that on Procreate, but that's the way I did it. And I managed to create this. And then all I did was I bought the um, iron on transfer vinyl i didn't buy it from cricket it's quite expensive and i honestly could not find it so i went on amazon and bought heat transfer vinyl vinyl and then i print cut it out and uh on my cricket and you cut it out mirrored because then you turn it over and then you iron it on and then i ironed it on and this is what it came out like and just yeah it's just so nice and then you get to keep this it's like a little personal touch your guests can keep it it kept everybody warm everyone looked the same as well it was really cool um so yeah so Making little personalised jumpers is such a great idea. Also, you don't need a Cricut for it. Obviously, if you want a really clean design like this, a Cricut is great. But you can get jumpers like that made online and you upload a design. You can also get iron on paper and you print out on a paper 
and then you iron it on. Obviously, you might want to use like a white jumper for that because it tends to leave like a white kind of um, the paper. But there's ways around it, and I'm sure you guys will be able to figure something out if you don't have a Cricut. Also, for the first night, I mentioned earlier, I made pizzas, so I personalised pizza boxes. Made pizza boxes, and then I basically like cut up all of the pizza and had it in these pizza boxes for everybody to eat from. Um, yeah, such a good idea. Again, I used the similar um, illustration, but I tweaked it and made it a little bit smaller. Then I printed it out on just vinyl sticker on my Cricut and stuck it on top of these pizza boxes that I bought from Amazon. These are great because they're recyclable, which is amazing, um, and they're really easy to put together. You can get brown ones, white ones, whatever colour you want. Um, Amazon is going to be your best friend for hen parties because of like next day delivery, buy in bulk and everything is super affordable. Some more things I made for the whole weekend were some signs. So these sort of acrylic signs are quite trendy at the moment. A lot of people have them at their weddings and um, I ended up buying these acrylic sheets from Amazon just in like an A4 size. And again, used my Cricut and used sticker vinyl in black cut out these texts. Um, I just found a font on the font that I really liked and then I basically just stuck them on here. So I've got sweet, sweets and treats now showing for the cinema night. I had one for the glitter station. So yeah, you can kind of just customise different little signs for the hen party. And then I bought these little stands from Amazon. They came in packs of five, I think. And then literally the sign just lent up on it like that super cute so yeah if you just want to like personalize and do like different areas maybe you're doing like a festival themed tent party these would come in handy you could even which i kind of wish i did um you could paint on the back to cover up the text so it's more legible um i left them clear because i quite like them clear but you can you could put uh, like a bit of paper on the back or something on the back or, or paint it or spray paint it or something so yeah, lots of ideas you can do that. Again, look on Pinterest because there's so many ideas on there. And then another thing I personalised was these sippy cups. So I've actually got drinking it right now. But basically I got these online. I uh, can't remember the website, I'll pop a link below. But they, were, they weren't too, bad, too badly priced. But I got them last year for when we went to go to Ibiza. And then I ended up ordering more for the hen party here because more guests came to the hen party here. And again, I did the same design as the pizza boxes. And then I also put everyone's names on it as well. So these are actually great because these can be kept. They're reusable. So we just cleaned them every day in between um, each hen day. And everyone had their alcohol in there. So we weren't really using any like plastic cups or anything like that. I did buy some paper cups as a backup just for like when we were doing shots. And if anyone wanted to kind of like to put water in this and have an alcoholic drink or put water in a cup and have this as their alcoholic drink because it's quite hot over the weekend. But these are great and everyone can keep them. As you can see, I'm still using mine at home now. And it comes with a straw and it's just great. Um, and everyone loved the fact that I personalised them as well. So yeah, I think personalising decor at hen party is just such a nice little touch. Um, doing names on things, doing like tote bags. I did little goodie bags, but I ended up just getting like, um, going on Ginger Ray and just getting the I Do Crew white and gold bags. Because originally I hadn't really wanted, I, I didn't really think about doing goodie bags for everybody. It wasn't like a thought of mine because I, I kind of was running out of budget. So I ended up just getting the little paper ones and just putting in a couple of little bits like sashes, some little like kind of um, photo with prop glasses and things like that. Um, but yeah, so goodie bags are a great idea if you want to do those for kind of the decor and everything and personalising. Um, there's so many ideas. So honestly, guys, look on Pinterest. I'll pop some links below. But yeah, personalising things, having a cricket machine is, like, it helped me a lot. Because it just meant that I could make, like, really, really nice things. And it was just affordable doing it for me, rather than hiring it. I actually made, like, a DIY um, sign. So I got a really large bit of acrylic, did a welcome sign. And then I made, like, a pampasy kind of um, hanging, like, decal thing a while back with Pampas and Bloom on a Zoom event. So I actually used that and tied it to a clothes rail that I bought from Argos that was £18. I remember I hired a sign for my um, my 30th birthday party last year and it cost me like £100 to hire it and I think it cost me £50 to make this sign that I made. So I was saving money doing it, which was amazing. So 
and it looked really good. I was so pleased with it. So yeah, I'll pop a link below to the um, rail if you want to get that from um, Argos and the acrylic sheet that I got. Because again, all I need to do now is peel off the vinyl sticker, recycle it, and then print out another sign and stick it on. So I can keep reusing the acrylic and the rail and everything for different events that I host at my house. So yeah, it's quite a nice thing to have. And you know, if any of your friends are doing other hen parties, you can kind of just loan out the DIY bits and bobs that you've made. Um, yeah, I feel like that's probably it on the decor and the personalizing games. Okay, TikTok. We played so many TikTok drinking games. It was so much fun because it was drinking games that we'd never really played before. So we did like the one where you zoom in with your face. We did the one where you have a shot and you put a pack of cards on top and you blow the cards off. And the last person to blow the cards completely off has to do the shot. Um, my sister actually made Jenga, drinking game Jenga. So she painted all the bricks in pink. She wrote a forfeit on all of the bricks. It was like, miss a turn, take a shot, give a shot. Everyone, everyone drinks. Um, make a rap about the bride-to-be, wear a funny hat, um, do the whap dance, make up a dance routine, twerk, like just loads of really great forfeits, and then we played Jenga. So again, that was such a fun drinking game. But again, just go on TikTok with so many drinking games and just save them down. And just What I did was I made a list on my phone of games. I did a Mr. and Mrs. quiz. So I asked the fiancé questions and then he gave me answers before the hen party and then my sister had to guess his answers and then I did a body part quiz where I got body parts <clears throat> I did eye ear hand foot and knee of six no of five of, of my sister's fiance and of five partners from the hen group and my sister has to had to guess what body part belonged to her fiance so again so funny because she got a couple wrong um and we were like, oh my god, you totally don't recognise your fiancé. But it's actually so hard when you've literally just got an eye or an ear. The ear was the hardest. And obviously the way everyone's taking their photos, they aren't the best quality. So the colours looked a bit different. Like, it was just quite hard. Um, so yeah, loads of different games. I'm going to pop a list of game ideas in the description below as well. Um, but yeah, TikTok was a great place to look for drinking games. Um, and, and different hen games. And then... Yeah, I'd say that's about it. But basically, you know, the last thing of your budget is kind of you need to put budget aside for food and drink. And then whatever budget you have left, you've got a budget to work towards for decor, games and bits and bobs like that. Um, and so on the subject of food and drink, again, that's probably the last thing that you'll buy a couple of days or a day before the hen party. You want to get people's dietary requirements and you just want to figure out kind of what everyone drinks. So you want soft drinks. Maybe people will want Prosecco. I love a cocktail and I know everyone loves a cocktail so get some juices get some elderflower cordial get some yeah peach juice peach puree different flavored bits and bobs you can get jug like you can get like cartons of like mojito mixes um stuff like that so people can like make a nice drink um again lots of ice try and keep stuff in a fridge if you can I've got an outdoor fridge which is super handy to have but lots and lots of ice and then I made frozen strawberry daiquiris. I actually featured it in my weekly vlog, so I will pop a link to my weekly vlog if you guys want to watch it. But I bought reusable pouches from Amazon, and I bought a pack of 100. Then I bought frozen strawberries, fresh strawberries, lime juice in like a little pot, um, some vanilla syrup that you can get, like low calorie one, like just get some sort of like sweetener. Um, and then you're gonna want Bacardi and a blender. You blend rum, the frozen and fresh strawberries, the lime and the sugar syrup in the blender and I made a batch of frozen strawberry daiquiri. I then poured it in the pouches and they, like, they like lock together with the little like ziplock thing and then I put them in the freezer. And then I made 40 of them and when we wanted one we just took a batch out of the freezer, left it on the side in the sun for it to melt a little bit so it was more like a slushy and it was great. So if your bride tribe, hen party, love frozen cocktails, it's a great way to do it. And you bulk make them before the hen, because obviously they do take time to make, especially for like a lot of, a lot of people. Um, and then put them in the freezer and get them out as and when you drink. So obviously this, that's a great way of doing it if you're at a hen house 
or you're at your own home. Um, but yeah, just a little tip there. They went down a treat. They were freaking delicious. And obviously it being hot as well, just worked out really, really well. Um, but yeah, music. I made my sister make a playlist on Spotify because she loves Ibiza music. I love it, but I don't know like all the DJs and stuff like her. So she put together a playlist, which I played. Um, yeah, God, what else do I even say? I mean, guys, I vlogged it. And I tried to feature as much as I could. You guys might have seen my stories. We had the best weekend. We had the best weekend. Considering it was the third hen party that I had to organise. It was so much fun. Everyone loved it. We just had the best time and everyone just felt so free and like happy. And it was just great. It was great. But yeah, I, I hope I've helped you organise a hen party. I hope I've given you ideas. Hope, um, yeah, check out the links below, guys, that I've um, linked for you in terms of like Pinterest any research websites that I've linked, any blogs and stuff. Um, yeah, I've made a list of games as well. Do check out those companies I mentioned. They're amazing. The sax player was Elijah Music. Um, Elijah Paul Music on Instagram, I think his Instagram is. Uh, but I'll link him below as well because I found him on, I think it was like Pop Top UK or something. But I'll, obviously I'll link all, that, all the websites and everything below. Uh, but yeah, anything else, ask me. Please don't um, hesitate to comment. I will try and get back to you. Um, yeah, I hope I've given you a great rundown of how to organise a hen party in the UK, I mean, and abroad, to be honest, because everything kind of that I've mentioned will work abroad. The only different thing being is, you know, booking flights and hotels and accommodation and stuff. But, um, yeah, we had the best time and I hope you guys loved seeing it and watching it and hearing about all my tips and tricks and how I personalise stuff. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching guys. I'll see you in another video very, very soon. I also realised halfway through this video I was not wearing lipstick, which <laughs> I always wear lipstick, so soz if you think my lips look weird. It's because I'm not wearing any lipstick and I've not lined my lips or anything. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching guys. I'll see you in another video very, very soon. Peace out.